Hey there, in this video we will be talking all about Betafish Drop C and by the end of this video you will have a pretty good idea on how to prevent it as well as how to treat one. The things that we will run through include the symptoms of Drop C, the root cause of Drop C, expectations around Drop C, what are some of the causes and solutions, as well as a step-by-step -step solution to treat Drop C, and also what are some of the common myths around Drop C that we will be debunking. So let's dive right in. Dropsy is a symptom that appears on fish in which most of the time their abdomens are filled with fluid, they become bloated, and their scales also protrude like a pine cone. The other common symptoms that show up include discoloration, weak appetite, and just weak physical movement in general. However, those are only the symptoms. The root cause of dropsy is actually bacterial infection and typically gram-negative bacteria that destroy the organs and causes the fluid to swell in the organs. And most of the time it is also caused by external factor that compromises the fish immune system and that's very important to tackle otherwise your future betta fish will have the same issue. But before that, here are some of the expectations around dropsy. Firstly, both the general consensus on the internet and also our experience so far shows that the drop C survival rate is at about 20%. And of course, the earlier you discover it, the higher the chance of recovery. If your betta fish does not recover, it typically dies between 2 weeks to 3 weeks. And our personal observation is that as long as the fish is still eating, there's a good chance of the fish recovering because it still has its energy and its fighting spirit. But the moment the fish stop eating, the fin clam up and they stop moving, we would say that our success rate so far of treating those fish has been at 0%. So in those cases, we suggest euthanizing the fish. And the final most important point that we want to mention is to not blame yourself for all these things that has happened because it is indeed a part of the learning process when it comes to taking care of a betta fish or fish keeping in general. So we really encourage you to keep testing out different things, figure out what else could have gone wrong and go and fix each and every one of these factors because when you do, the joy and the fun of this hobby can be really enjoyable. With those things said, here is a quick list of things that actually weakens the betta fish immune system. Now keep in mind that most of these are betta fish basic care, so we are going to run through some of them pretty quickly. If you want more details, you can check out link in the video description. Firstly, maintaining the ammonia level, ensure your tank is cycled. Secondly, water quality, didn't treat chlorine. Thirdly, water temperature, either you didn't acclimate your fish or the water change is too sudden and that shocked the fish. Fourthly, improper nutrition, which means it is using old pellet or you overfeed or underfeed your fish. Number five, stress. This can be betta fish constantly flaring at its own reflection and also its tank mate. Number six, overexposure to light so that there is no sleep. Number seven, pH value. Number eight, external wound due to decoration and environment and this can cause infection to happen at the wound. Number 9, it could be the betta fish is already weak and has low immune system even before it arrives at your tank. Therefore, changing a different betta fish supplier may be a factor to test. And number 10, this is actually very rare but it is also worth mentioning. Sometimes there is hidden metal toxicity in the water depending on the cities where you live in. In those cases, you will want to clear with activated carbon, get a low tech planted aquarium tank so plant can filter the water, or use osmosis water filter as a way to filter your water at the start. Since this is very hard to check, we will only test out this hypothesis only after we have validated all the above factor. So let's dive into an actual live case study with our betta fish here and we'll show you a step by step process that we have taken that helps to cure our own betta fish. So the first thing that we try to do is to pinpoint out what causes the drop C for this betta fish and then we realize whoops we've been feeding our betta fish with a pellet that's about one and a half years old. So we realized that could actually be the problem and we bought a new pellet and then we start our routine of treating the betta fish every single day. So there's actually three steps that we do to our betta fish every single day for 11 days until it recover. So the first step is that we actually give it an Epsom salt bath. The reason is because the salt water would pulls off the excessive fluid via osmotic pressure. So all we do is separate our betta fish to a small container and then we use a ratio of 1 third teaspoon to about 1 liter or a quarter gallon of water. And we only let our betta fish soak in that water for about 15 minutes. 
Now, note that in this case here, we are not using aquarium salt, which is sodium chloride, because those are typically used for eliminating parasite. Our intention is to use Epsom salt, magnesium sulfate, because it acts as a muscle relaxant, which can help with the constipation and digestion, and it also reduces swelling for our betta fish, which makes it feel better. A quick note here is that Epsom salt can be damaging to the plant, so if you are doing this, make sure you are doing it at the quarantine tank. And note that the basic principle of acclimating your fish is very important if there is a lot of temperature fluctuation between your water. Take for example, if you are doing this in the winter season, then your tap water would be a lot cooler, so you will want to warm up the water first and also acclimate your betta fish to that new container. Next, while our betta fish is taking an Epsom salt bath, what we will do is to actually do a 50 to 70% water change. And note that we do this every single day because the environment is one of the major factors that supports the fish immune system. So providing it with quality water is our primary intention right now. And the final step which is really important is that we added a form of antibiotic. Now you remember early on we mentioned the root cause of dropsy is actually a gram-negative bacteria. Therefore, removing this bacteria from the main tank is very important. Now, the product that we use here is actually C. Camps Canaplex, but the brand name isn't the one that is most important. It is the chemicals that treat gram-negative bacteria that is the most important. So some of the chemical names for these purposes can be Canamycin Sulfate, Alkyl Cytzer Tab, API General Cure, API Apro Mycin or Maracin 2. We have run through quite a large amount of forum discussion and betta fish keepers and those are the products that has shown to have a successful track record so far. But once again our recommendation is stick to one and also to make sure that the content of those products removes gram negative bacteria. In terms of how much of this to add to the main tank, that would depend on a product by product basis. We also like to dose the antibiotic directly on top of our betta fish in hope that it gives our betta fish a direct exposure. And despite doing all these steps, we typically only know the result at the last few days. And in our case here, you can see on the 8th day, it is still pretty pale, transparent, pine cone with rotted fins. But on the 9th day, the fish is still transparent and pale, but it has less pine cone shape, at least when doing the Epsom salt bath. And on the 10th day, you can see the color starts coming back, and it is still a little bit pale. But on the 12th day, you can actually see the color is a lot more vibrant. It looks as if it has completely recovered too. And our understanding is that each betta fish is going to vary a little bit. But this also means that as long as your betta fish is still eating and striving, don't give up on it yet. Just test out all this treatment and see whether it can recover or not. And in the final segment of this video, we are gonna run through some of the myths. Now, first one is about methylene blue. Now, we are not an expert on the chemistry that goes on behind, but we dug through some encyclopedia and referred to some of the experts. They did mention that because the root cause of dropsy is gram-negative bacteria, methylene blue, technically the content is chloroxine dye with very little or no value that acts as antimicrobial, even though it is commonly marketed as a form of disease control. So our thoughts is that there are still people who succeed with using methylene blue in treating dropsy, but we are gonna guess that it is primarily because those products have antibiotic or antimicrobial function. Because methylene blue fish treatment products are often mixed with those material, so that would be our guess. But so far we have tried treating our betta fish with methylene blue once or twice to treat dropsy and it hasn't had any success for us thus far. And the next common myth that we have heard is that some people have argued that feeding too much protein food actually causes the betta fish to have dropsy. Now that doesn't make sense at all for us because betta fish by their own nature they are actually carnivore or to be more specific insectivore which means they eat a lot of insects that are made up of primarily protein. So saying betta fish eats a component that they naturally eat in their natural habitat causes them to fall sick. For us, that is just an argument that makes no sense. And the final part is about feeding. While some people recommend not to feed the betta fish early and only continuing 2-3 to three days later when the swelling has decreased, our opinion on that is that those are only for the case of overfeeding. In our case here, the bacteria causes the organ failure and the pine cone doesn't look too bloated. So we just continue feeding with the usual routine. After all, the betta fish would need all this energy to recover anyway. 
And that is all that we would like to share with you when it comes to how to treat betta fish dropsy and all of the details surrounding it. So with that said, if you find this video to be helpful, please leave a like, thumbs up and you can subscribe to our channel for more content related to betta fish or low tech hunter aquarium tank. So we'll see you in the next video. Take care.